In this series of videos, we're going to see how to make maps with Google Fusion tables. And we're going to progress towards making this composite map. It has two data layers on it. Uh, one uh, shows the world's freshwater ecoregions defined by these boundaries. And that is colored according to the number of globally threatened species in each ecoregion. And then over the top of that, there are also a series of points which uh, designate sites under the Ramsar Convention. That's an international convention for uh, conserving wetlands. Uh, and these are sites that are important to amphibians. So you'll see when we click on the map, uh, we get information about each Eureka region and also information about each, um, each site as well. So to make our map, we need to be logged in to Google Drive with a Google account. Here we are in Google Drive in my account. Uh, so here, this is where we're going to upload data. Now the first data we want are actually just the boundaries, just those freshwater ecosystem boundaries. We will later join one of our key operations with data, the data on threatened species to those boundaries. Um, now, geographical data, including boundary data, comes in a couple of common formats. One is called shapefiles. Uh, the other one is called KML. Now, KML will upload directly into Fusion Tables. Uh, shapefiles, it's a little bit more complicated. You need to use this website. Uh, there is a link in the accompanying handout. It's called Shape to Fusion, sometimes called Shape Escape. Uh, and you can upload uh, shape files to Google Fusion tables there. It's a lengthy process, so I'm not going to show it you here. Uh, and in fact, we already have the boundary data for those freshwater ecoregions here in Fusion tables. Uh, it was actually uploaded by the Nature Conservancy, whose data I'm using here. Again, there is a, a link to this table in the accompanying handout. Um, so let's just take a look at it. Uh, there are a number of columns in here. Uh, geometry is the column that actually defines the boundaries. Uh, you'll see this was uploaded as a shapefile originally. It's now been converted into KML. And there are a few other columns that I want to draw to your attention. Eco ID here is a identifying number for each eco region. Now that will be important when we join to the data on the number of threatened amphibians. Um, there is a column called eco region, which is just the name of each region, and then there is one called MHT TXT, which is basically a, a description of the type of the ecoregion. The rest of it we don't really need to worry about. Now let's just take a quick look at the data we're going to upload to Fusion Tables to join to that boundary data. It's in a spreadsheet called Threatened Amphibians. Let's just look at the columns. We have again the eco ID and those numbers. We have the ecoregion again, MHT, TXT, we saw that before. There's also a number, which we don't need to worry about here. But there is a column that is uh, basically an abbreviation of threatened amphibians, and that is the number of species. You'll see it gets as high as 95. If we go down, um, it's, uh, it goes down to zero. Note that some of those zeros are no data. So zero can mean zero, or it can mean no data. OK. Uh, that's the entire spreadsheet, and which we will now upload. So to upload that data, we need to go back to Google Drive, hit Create More Fusion Table. Uh, a new tab will open up, and you get the opportunity to choose File. So this is the file I want. Open it. Click Next. Take a little while to load. And we, here we are importing our new table. 
Uh, yes, the column names are in row one, so that's fine. We can go next again. At this point, we can add a description, some other information. I'm just going to go through and finish. And here's the data in Fusion Tables. We have the same columns as before. So if you notice here, the ecoregions are uh, highlighted in yellow. That's because Fusion Tables can recognize certain geographical locations and try and map them automatically. But we don't want to, we don't want to use that. We want to join the data to our boundaries to make sure everything lines up correctly. Now a join in Fusion Tables is actually called a merge and we find it under the file menu merge. So we need to select the table and we can do it by pasting the uh, web address of the boundary data in here. So let's go to the boundary data, let's copy that web address and let's paste it in and click next. Now uh, Fusion Tables has actually recognized here that it's on the column eco ID that we want to perform the join. Uh, if it didn't recognize it correctly we can select the columns ourselves. Anyway that's all good. Click next and now we get the option to choose uh, what columns we want in the merged table. Um, the ones with the white background are from the current table, our uploaded spreadsheet. The yellow background, that's from the, uh, from the boundary data. So first, uh, there's quite a lot of columns in here that I don't want. First I'm going to deselect everything and then we'll just select those that we want. Well, I'll include EcoAD, the one we're joining on. Uh, let's just take threatened amphibians from the spreadsheet we're in. We need geometry that defines the boundaries uh, and from that boundary data let's also take the name of the eco region and the description of its type which is in the column MHT text and that should be enough to be able to draw our map. So I'm going to hit merge it will take a little while uh, and now the merge table is created which we can click on to view and it will open in a new tab. So now we can actually start mapping. Uh, I'm going to do this by clicking on Map of Geometry. Uh, you may find in this case that you need to just pull the map down a bit. First it'll look like points, but if you zoom in just a little, the boundaries should appear, and here they are. Now. Uh, before actually colouring up the map according to the data, I'm going to tidy, what, tidy up what appears in this information window. You can see it's a little bit messy at the moment. So to do that, I go to Tools, Change Information, Window Layout. Um, first thing I'm going to do in this automatic tab is just uncheck EcoID, having used it for the join. We don't really want it to uh, show up anymore. And then I'm going to go to the Custom tab. Now, what's written in this area is just uh, HTML. Uh, so we can edit it as we might a web page. So I'm just going to do a number of things. I'm going to uh, change the order of the data here a little bit. Uh, we'll have the name of the ecoregion first. I don't want it in capitals. Um, then that will bring in the data for the ecoregion. I'm going to add another carriage return. That's just that BR tag. Um, then MHT text, if you remember, is actually type. Again, let's have a couple of carriage returns after that. And finally, uh, this should read number of, uh, actually I won't do number, I'll just do 
globally threatened amphibian species and that should all be good. Now if I save that and now click on the Zika regions you'll see it's much neater and more informative. And now we need to color up the map according to the data. Again we do it under tools, change map styles and we have polygons, that's just these shapes. Uh, so we want to go to fill color for our polygons. Now we don't want one color, which is what we have at the moment. We actually want the option buckets. Uh, and we are going to divide this into six buckets for our data. We need to select the column we're going to do that on. We're going to do it on the number of threatened amphibians. And then I'm going to change these numbers uh, to something sensible. Let's have one, uh, one to three, three to eight, eight to sixteen, sixteen to 31 and remember that our highest value is 95. Now I've done this before so I know that that produces a map that looks fairly sensible. You will want to uh, experiment with this with your, your own data. And now I need to change the colors. Uh, so we click here. I'm going to select one of Google's uh, own color schemes. Uh, I'm going to click on that uh, there and select 75% opacity. Then the next one down, whoops, again, 75% opacity. That just gives a good, you know, it'll stand out well from the map. Whoops, keep forgetting the 75s. Carry on down. Um, it's the fourth one. Again, 75. Take the fifth one. Oops, and the 75. And finally, the last one. Make that 75 as well and that should give us a fairly good color scheme. I'm going to hit save and the map redraws with the colors that we want and we are basically done with our map of uh, threatened amphibians by freshwater ecoregions. And there's just one more thing I'm going to do. Uh, as we want to embed this into a web page, we actually need to make it visible to the wider world. We hit the share button here. Um, we get the opportunity to change who has access. You'll see it's private at the moment. So I'm going to make it public on the web and hit save. And we are now done. I'm also going to quickly show you where you find information about this uh, table, this map. It's under File, About This Table. And you will see there's something in here called Encrypted ID. Uh, we'll discuss that later, but that uh, is uh, something that you may need uh, when you get more proficient with making maps with multiple layers.